Hey there, ladies and gents. It is your favorite Asian robot, the people's champion. Now, I thought I'd do um, my videos in a little bit of a chill style today. And uh, also you can see the upcoming fashion showcase. Somebody told me to do Star-Lord. I'll be doing Shovel Knight later as well, but somebody wanted Star-Lord, so I said, fine. I'll put together something that looks like Star-Lord. Now, of course, ideally this should be done with repeaters, but today we're going to be talking about the sword. Now, with the sword, the sword is a fantastic weapon. I love the sword. And why is it that every single time somebody got to do something weird? Oh, sorry, Justin Mary. No, no. Leave me be. <laughs> All right. So basically, um, today what I'm going to be talking about is an easy sword build using no legendaries, no legendary cells, nothing special. All right, is it effective? Yes. Is it the best? No. <laughs> and the reason why is obviously, um, well, the sword works best with Avenging Overdrive. Does it also work well with Ardent Cyclone, Valiant Overdrive? Yes, it does. But you know, I'll be doing this one with Valiant Overdrive. Reason being, I just, I'm just gonna keep it simple okay so how do you play this build um, plain and simple Valamir's regard is your Valamir sword all right what's special about it is the ultimate ability of the Valamir sword all right getting into this straight up there is it Wow, I equipped the thing and I can't even find it in the menu again ah oh, there it is once it's charged your next attack deals 700 radiant damage and the charge rate increases with higher current health you can see it up there too um basically how this works is that every few seconds all right your attack charges all right and when you whack something it's gonna deal that 700 radiant damage that's plus 700 radiant damage on your next attack and it creates this mini radiant explosion which spreads to like for example, you hit the head, it will also hit the legs and everything. It, it's very useful, basically. Uh, it's a strong attack. Sorry, let me take a drink. It's a strong attack, and it really helps up your DPS. Valmir is also one of the um, creatures that you face relatively early on, so it's quite easy to get its parts. Um, and when you build this, you'll be putting in a rage cell. So if you do take damage, right, your damage is going to increase. You'll also be putting in a energized cell here. Now, I'm going to I'm gonna tell you that there's two ways to play this. If you find that you've got no trouble charging up your special constantly and keeping it up, don't use energize. Use etheric attunement. But if you do want to keep your special up for longer and you enjoy keeping it up, um, you can actually swap all the etheric attunement for energize it's genuinely up to you all right how you want to play you can do it mixed you can have it you can have it all in you can have it not all in it's really up to you me i like half and half meaning three etheric attunement three energize but that's because i've already done 10 reforges on sword so i already gain um 10 faster um weapon charge gain weapon charge rate all right because i've already got 10 reforges on sword um, your Omni Cell will be Iceborne for this build. Plain and simple, that's how it works. Iceborne is great. Um, it'll give you lots of sustain and keep you alive. Scarn's Defiance will be your Lantern. I, al I almost always use this in my build. Why? Because the extra um, 300 hit points on the shield. Now, you can go up to 600, all right? But usually you get 300 because it's 30 hit points, 30 shield points every 10 seconds. <laughs> is very very helpful it's genuinely super helpful so i often use scarns defines um nash cap will be your headpiece all right toughness cell boreal resolve toughness cell all right now these fiery gauntlets i should have power surged them but i don't have the a the hearts because i'm preparing for the thunder deep drask update so um you can just stick it in an adrenaline cell but realistically speaking you should actually have a uh, power surged fiery gauntlets all right and that'll help you have plus three endurance instead of plus one but for now 
But you know what? Even with even with plus one, it works. Boreal March will be your boots, and you put in another adrenaline cell here. Overall, what this build gives you, with no trial cells, no special legendaries involved. All right, I'm gonna show you right now. This build gives you plus six adrenaline. All right, for every ten missing stamina, you get th plus three percent damage. All right, so this goes up to thirty percent additional damage if you drain all your stamina. And with a plus three endurance, you actually have forty more stamina to play around with. So that's actually um, assuming you don't have the full 110 stamina, you have only 100, it will give you 140 stamina, which multiplied by 3%. Alright, it's 14 times 3, which gives you a total of 42%. Alright, that's useful. That's useful raw damage right there if you're consuming all your stamina. Rage, if you take a whack, you gain 20% damage for 15 seconds. Very useful because I'm assuming you're going to take hits. 6 Tenacious, 6 Toughness. All right, your current hit points with this build, all right, is 1,700. Now, sorry, you've got 1,600 if you don't have the additional 100 hit points yet. And uh, that's basically 32% additional raw damage, all right? So that's even more raw damage on top of that. Aether Hunter comes from your Valamir Sword, 20% extra damage for Aether Charge Behemoths. It's useful. Etheric Attunement is in your Lantern. Now you can go full Energize if you want to, 40% weapon charge rate, or you can go half and half, it's up to you. Me, half and half is what I like, so 20% increased recharge rate and on your lantern and just a plus 3 energized in the Valamir Sword for faster charging, faster TPS. Okay, so I'm assuming you want to see this in combat. Ladies and gents, if you want to see the combat showcase, you can. If you don't want to, that's okay. You can just like, share, and subscribe right now. And if you feel like it, you can drop a tip via the link in the description of the video. It's up to you. It's optional. But otherwise, let's go straight to... Mm, oh, okay. With this kind of stuff, I usually don't go way, way, way above my level. And I think about... The 5 to 10 levels above me should be alright. And the reason is because obviously, even with a... Um, like with a beginner build, you're not really going to extreme, so about uh, 5 to 8 levels above me. Sorry about that, literally was looking, looking for my remote because it's boiling in here now. Uh, five, to, 5 to 8 levels above you is more than enough for a combat showcase. Because normally you'd be engaging with beginner builds, right, with easy builds. You're normally engaging behemoths that are about 3 to 5 levels ahead of you. Uh, you don't really want to go too far beyond that um, and the reason is because it's not efficient experience and it's also uh, it's also more detrimental okay all right now we're going in so I'm going to show you guys how to play this build, but it's very simple, it's very straightforward stuff. You don't have to think too hard, you don't have to do too much. Alright. It's a very straightforward build. Now, do you see that on the left hand side of the screen, you, there's a little sun symbol? That means your radiant stuff is charged, alright? So when you're going in... I usually like to start with my ice ball. See, so your radiant thing will just hit. And then it will charge over time. It charge like in less than 10 seconds. It's about 8 seconds. So that is what will increase your DPS here. Because your Radiant Explosions will keep dealing damage to the Behemoth as you're fighting. Okay, so that's where most of the usefulness of the build comes from. And if you do take a little damage along the way, that's okay. As soon as your sword charges, use your Valiant Overdrive. Get right in there. Now you might be thinking, why don't I? Why don't I just use Ardent? Well, Ardent's great, but also don't forget that Ardent is what you use when you are very, very confident in your abilities. All right. Now, Adrenaline may not be doing much here, but I'll show you how to apply Adrenaline to your build a little later. This is a. This is just me showing you how to burst it. All right. And this is often the combo that I use. Um, the only problem with using Adrenaline in the Sword Build, and why I don't like Adrenaline in the Sword Builds, is that, um, honest, honest to God, Sword Builds do not fit Adrenaline very well, but it's one of the easiest raw damage cells to use. Okay, 
What I would normally do with the sword is that in order to trigger adrenaline properly, I would actually uh, sap my stamina quite a bit before getting into a fight and that'll set up a baseline for me, alright? You can see that that vomit was just eliminated straight up, so there's no, nothing to think about. Just make sure, like, I will dodge toward an enemy, drain my stamina in this way. This way I've got plenty of extra bonus damage, alright? But I also have to, well, I also, I also have to be careful that I don't drain it too hard, alright? Because you drain it too hard, um, you're gonna be left with nothing to dodge, so you gotta walk that fine line yourself. Now, keep in mind though that if you do, if you do decide to do it in this manner, whenever you dash with your recursive hilt, right, um, the only problem is that every time you dash, you will end up uh, restoring some of your stamina. So you're kind of back at full stamina already. See that? So basically, what I'll do is I will I will dodge in between, and I'll use that as a booster, sort of. And then while something is down, I will use my heavy attacks, dash in again. The, the problem is that the combos that I use normally um, will have a dash punctuating in between because it does boost your DPS. And for that reason, you do have to sap your own stamina, but I mean, it's up to you how you want to do it. Not that it's not that difficult but it can also be a pain in the ass now i'm going to show you an alternative but the alternative is a little bit expensive um how best do i do this okay i'll show you an alternative all right alternatively all right if you don't want to use too much adrenaline and stuff one good methodology all right Although I do not like relying on this, is putting in Predator and then the Adrenaline here, right? You also, um, you can put in either Evasive Fury, right? Or, or, one of my personal favorites, I actually put in the, uh, Koshai Hand, right? And I put in some Ray, uh, some Rage Hunter. Rage Hunter can be very useful. So you can do something like that to modify the build in your own way. Um, if you don't like the adrenaline method where you have to dodge and constantly think about that. Um, but the problem is that Predator and Rage work in opposite directions. So I kind of like it because this way, uh, when your Rage goes down, your Predator comes up. As long as you don't take a hit. You take another hit, your Rage comes back up. You get what I mean? So that's, that's kind of the way it works. Like, okay, I took a hit there, which means Rage is active, Predator's gone, but now I got Rage bonus instead, you see? And if this thing gets enraged, well, my Rage Hunter triggers, and I and I gain more. So this way, you don't have to worry about stamina management. The only downside, I swear, to the sword is genuinely stamina management, because... <clears throat> stamina management's a bit too easy on the sword, like... I did not know that some of the attacks restore stamina, like... I thought it would just be like, other weapons, okay... You know, I, I, I do take an extra hit, or whatever. Sorry, no, I, I'm able to do like a hit, like a fast light attack, but it shouldn't restore my stamina, you see. But it, because it does, um, it makes things a lot worse for people who try to use adrenaline builds. Adrenaline is great on most low level weapons, and for most easy builds, I actually recommend it as the choice cell. Here, on the sword, because of the way the combos work, and how your stamina just gets restored, well... It's not exactly a fantastic choice, it just means that you rely on other stuff. But since it's enraged, like, you see this behemoth enraged? No problem. Now this is where the fun begins. That thing, that thing's done for. You can see that there's no loss in efficiency, even if you use Salt Turner build. Um, it just, it just basically works in a in a different sense, and you can still do everything that the adrenaline build could do. It's just that you're not relying on the adrenaline mechanic. So 
So basically that's another option, like you don't have to worry about, oh what's my stamina level to deal max DPS. To be frank, Sword has always suffered from that as an issue, um, even on some of my other builds, I do not use Adrenaline. And I have mentioned it multiple times that the reason is, again, plain and simple, you don't want to be dealing with uh, that particular mechanic. Evasive Fury can actually work really well in your favor, because it gives you a little bit of additional attack speed, which is great. Helps you uh, really lay the smack down on your opponents. Now, the cool thing about the Valiant is that you can dash. I usually love that dash. It's adorable. And it helps me out getting into combat and stuff like that. Anyway, yeah. So you see a very simple playstyle. We're already level 4. We start out at level 2. We're now at level 4. It is that easy. It is that easy to just work this build. Like you do not have to think too hard about the stuff that you need to do. Um, just go in, pump out the DPS, you have plenty of survival put in, and voila. Alright, so if you like this build, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, share, and subscribe, alright? Going straight to the thank you scene, alright? Thank you to July's top tippers. Thank you so much to Bravo7910, Idget751, Breachinator, Sean, Lewis Grave, Drew ZGG, Vamps. I appreciate all of you. Thank you very much, and... Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, guys. If you want to, you can drop a tip by the link in the description of the video. It keeps me alive, helps me keep my content running. That's optional. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.